So there's a project called TextRank, and a friend of a friend, a close friend of mine, his research partner, Radha Milhasia, she came up with this algorithm and was subsequently hired by Google. The idea is that if you take a paragraph, or so, rather, let's start, if you take a text document and you split it into paragraphs and sentences, we have tools for that. Now, for each sentence, parse it with NLP. Every word, you know what the word is, you know what its root is, you know it's part of speech. You can now construct a graph. You can look at a noun and say, okay, what are its neighbors? Where are the adjectives? Where are the verbs? Where are the other nouns? And for the neighbors, link them together in a graph. And if you see repeat instances of the same root word, link those two. And if you have a knowledge graph, some context coming in, and you see links in common there, yeah, add those two. Now you end up with this graph representing your text document. And again, the text document may be a transcript from a video. So the trick in, in graph algorithms is we, we use this approach of something called centrality. Basically, we can look at all the parts that are linked together, and we can find out which are the ones that are the hubs, the ones that are most connected. And there are mathematical ways to describe that. One technique, it's something called eigenvalue centrality, a lot of two-bit words. There's a variant of it called stochastic eigenvalue centrality. The other name for that is page rank, so the algorithm that Google invented. Um, basically, once you've constructed a graph out of a text and you run page rank on it, the most highly ranked phrases are the ones that have a lot of reference throughout the document. And so basically you start pulling those out and you come out with a, a, what we call a feature vector. You come out with a list of key phrases that are highly ranked, but they're also basically a characteristic of the document. Um, and so this is a really great way not just to parse a text, but really start to understand what is that about? And it's a way to bring in uh, prior knowledge but an interesting thing, oh, by the way, here's a GitHub. Uh, I'm one of the lead committers on this project that implements it in Python, open source on GitHub. Um, one of the interesting things about this now is you can go back and reevaluate the, the, the text. If you've got that feature vector and the graph, you can go back and look at every sentence and you can see what's the vector distance from a sentence to my feature vector. And now I can go through the entire document and I'll rank those sentences and then take the top n and put them back into their original order and you come up with a summarization. This is a technique called extractive summarization. We use it for our search results, both on video and books. It works very well. Um, here's an example of taking an entire article and dropping it into a paragraph down in the bottom right. So, um, and, and there are ways of using deep learning with this too. Uh, extractive summarization is one step. You can go few steps further in terms of abstractive or generative summarization. Um, but there are very interesting ways of using AI to take a large quantity of, of media and condense it down. And that's a big win if you're an editor and you have to watch 4,000 hours of video per year. You know, that's like 10 months of having your finger on the fast forward button. So summarization, I think, is a big upcoming tool and technique.